This is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry. In today's case we will be extracting a lower molar and then placing a 5.5 by 13 millimeter noble active wide platform implant. Prior to placing the implant we're going to do what's called a smart fusion guide. A smart fusion guide is actually a mixture of different technologies. So using Nobel Clinician and also Nobel Procera, we're able to scan a model, fuse that back into a CT scan, which enables us to create the perfect guide. Once we have the CT scan, an impression is taken, and this is sent to a dental lab to do a scan using the 2G scanner, which is the Nobel Procera scanner. So this scanner is going to scan a particular model shown here. So we'll be able to have the before and the after of this particular situation. Now using the system of Nobel Connect, this can be sent back to the dental office and then smart fused into the CT scan. The smart fusion is my favorite part of this whole procedure. What we can do is using the Nobel Clinician software, we take the CT, push a few buttons, and then in comes the scan that was done on the Nobel Procera software. So you can see here, once the scan gets lined up on the original CT scan, you have a very accurate representation of the patient that you can start to fabricate your new guide. So we know where the tooth is supposed to be, we know where the nerve is, we know the angulation of the bone, and these features can give us a GPS of the patient that is extremely valuable. The purpose of the guide is to get the correct angulation and depth of the implant so you can do a really great final prosthesis. We're going to be using a 2 millimeter pilot hole guide here and envisioning where the nerve is, where the bone is, where the angles and where the uh, upper tooth is, we can get this implant exactly where we want even on an immediate basis. So right after extraction we'll be able to place this guide, get this implant into the exact position that's going to be great for long-term success. Once we have the Smart Fusion done, you can see a blend of the CT and the actual scan model. What this will do for us is we can envision where the soft tissues are, which is critical for us to really plan this case because we want to place this implant minimum of three millimeters below the free gingival margin. So we can start to see exactly, are we going to be close to the nerve? What's the angle going to be like? Where do we want to place this implant? Because doing this freehand is possible, but we want to be particularly accurate to get this so that it's not going to slip off to one side or be in a position that is just not going to be useful from a restorative phase. After the guide is designed in Nobel Clinician, you can push a button in the software that will send it securely over a network through Nobel Connect to Nobel BioCare where at the plant they're going to fabricate this smart fusion guide for you. They'll put it in a box, send it back to you, and this will fit accurately on the model and accurately in the patient's mouth, showing you where the, the uh, apex of the implant is going to be during surgery. It's always important to try the guide in before, but here we can't. We have to extract the tooth first. So we're going to extract the tooth, and you see the crown comes off. So we go back in with the physics forcep and take the rest of the root out, which is a great tool for doing this type of dentistry because some of these are a little difficult to get out, but this came out quite nicely. So then we'll take the Smart Fusion Guide, which is the two millimeter guide. We can take that to the mouth, making sure that it fits down because this is gonna determine the angulation of the drill. So you have to make sure it's sitting on top of the teeth properly. So let's make sure it fits on the model and then also make sure that it fits in the mouth properly. We'll take the guide and it actually goes into the mouth without any adjustments. And this is mostly due to this being scanned on an accurate model. So it's important to get really great models when you do the scan from the start. So we see that it's fitting down. Our fingers are actually gonna hold it down when we're doing the drilling. But as I put this drill in, you can see I have the depth gauge marked. This is 10 millimeters longer than an, an actual drill for a standard setup. So you can see that this is how much I'm going to be preparing into the bone. 
Now part of this will be above the apex because we're actually drilling into the frication area. So we do want to have a good solid three millimeters of bone below the apex area if we can. You know, we can grab into whatever bone we can. Sometimes we have to grab into the walls of the bone. But we're going down through the frication here. You can see this is showing the angulation and the depth. So it's going to be adding 10 millimeters onto your drill by using this particular guide system. So the drills are actually 10 millimeters longer due to this sleeve that's in the uh, particular guide. So when you do your calculation, you just have to make sure you're doing that. So you can see the, the guide pin is very accurate when we place it this way. It's going to be in the fossa area, which is going to be opposing the opposite cusp, so the lingual cusp of the upper molar. So we can see the direction indicator is just perfectly placed in this particular situation. Now since this is an immediate extraction case, and we're using a tapered implant rather than a straight implant, we have to pay particular attention to the size of the apex of the implant that we're placing. So the 5.5 millimeter implant actually has a 4.0 millimeter apex. So this is what our kind of concentration is going to be on when we're doing our drilling protocol. By using the 2 millimeter twist drill, the long one, we can actually have a look and see how deep the actual implant is. So this is a reference point from the guide. So we can go in and have a look at the free gingival margin versus where the final 15 or actually we would be more at a 16 millimeter uh, reference point to the free gingival margin. So this will enable us to keep the depth in mind in relationship to the nerve. So we can do this and making sure that we're going to be staying on track. The Noble Active Implant Surgical Driver has a reference line 3 millimeters above the platform. This reference line is useful in the anterior for placing implants. In the posterior, I like to place the implants about 4 millimeters below the free gingival margin, which encourages the implant to have a great emergence profile. Because on these posterior implants, we still have to come from the internal aspect of the platform shift, and this seems to work appropriately. Now recognizing that we're preparing the apex only of this particular implant, we start with the regular noble active drills. So we're using the shorter drills, but I do have an extension so that I can see things, uh, particularly for video, and also to make sure I know my depth. So I'm staying on angulation by thinking about the opposing cusp at the back of my drill, so the lingual cusp of the upper molar, plus I'm going to use angulation to stay between the two teeth. So I'll start with a 2.4, 2.8, and I'll prepare this down to around uh, 17 millimeters in this particular case. So we have 13 millimeters on the implant, four above the implant for soft tissues and bone, and then we start to widen this out. So we'll go to the 3.2, 3.6, and we're actually backing off a little bit, so making them almost a reverse Christmas tree kind of shape. Lastly, we're going to prepare just the entrance into this osteotomy, so do not take this drill to the full length. If we do that, then we're going to lose our stability. So we'll go in and just prepare just a very one millimeter aspect of the particular osteotomy so that the tip of the implant, which is four millimeters, can penetrate in there easily. Sometimes I'll use a screw tap, just again, just to do the top one millimeter so that the implant is gonna start and not be diverging and, and kind of going off in a different direction. Because we know the tip is actually four millimeters in this particular implant. So we want that osteotomy to be able to accept that and then exactly after that one millimeter, we want it to start to engage so it stabilizes the implant. So we're using the Y platform conical connection 5.5 by 13 millimeter implant. So this has a nice generous thread. It does have the platform shift we can see here, which is the smooth top, then the conical connection with the hex inside, which has been showing to be successful at maintaining the bone in a very, very fantastic manner. So this is a great implant. We have a new emergence profile. It's gonna be a little bit larger. So we're gonna take the implant out, have a little look at it. So it has that aggressive thread uh, pattern with a large pitch with uh, actually two threads. So one, one thread on either side of the implant, which actually push against each other. And then going from a very kind of pointy thread to a more square thread at the top of the implant, we're able to get this fantastic stability 
which is so necessary for immediate placement. So placing this in, you can see that my first pass, I'm not able to get this down to exactly where I want to be. So I'm actually getting locked up because we're getting such stability on this implant. So I go and take this implant back out and I'm going to re-prepare that area because this is uh, actually the first 5.5 that I've put in. But I'm using principles that I've been using on the 5.0 implant to place the same implant. So based on the uh, feel of the bone, I'm going back in with a 3.2, 3.6 millimeter wide drill. So this is a twist drill. And I'll prepare down a little bit deeper because we're getting into a little bit more basal bone with some cortical kind of qualities to it. And uh, so we go back in and we'll try to place the implant again. Again, I'm looking at the apex of this implant. I do not want to lose stability on this particular implant if I prepare the osteotomy too large. So we have the implant in position at about 70 newtons here. You can see it's at four millimeters below the free gingival margin. We're watching nerve position. Of course, you want to make sure you're not getting too close to the nerve. Now I'm going to place a healing abutment on just to do the bone grafting. So we'll take, usually I like to use a bridge healing abutment because it goes to the outside of the platform shift. We do not have one because this is a brand new setup or on a, a test with this implant. But you can see that we put the creos bone in around the particular uh, coronal aspect of the implant so that we can uh, graft in the jump gap. So by grafting in the jump gap, we're trying to control the soft tissues and have more bone grown around this implant so that we get a, the bone growing to the top of where the platform shift is starting. And usually this is typically what will happen with this implant. So you can see by uh, manipulating the bone, we get the blood into the bone, and then this is going to allow it to heal in a nice fashion, and we'll have a great stable implant. Once the bone graft has been placed, we want to kind of take a little bit of the kind of uh, wetness away so that it actually will clump and kind of coagulate a bit. And this is important because once we take out this abutment, so you can see I'm picking out the end of it so that the uh, unigrip driver will go in. But once we take this abutment out, we want to use an emergence type of healing abutment. So we're going to be using a peak abutment in this particular case. So we start to establish emergence profile at the time of surgery, which is critical to having this placed properly and then having it easy to restore for the restorative doctors because this emergence is such a great kind of flare from the internal aspect of this implant to go to the uh, contacts on the mesial and distal of a molar. So once we have the peak abutment placed and an x-ray taken to confirm its position, then we're going to come back in with a suture and do what I like to call a marble sack suture. So we go around the particular soft tissues and we're going to go around in a kind of a circular fashion and kind of cinch it so we're actually going to hold the bone graft up against the peak abutment. So this way, after about an hour of coagulation and clot healing, we're going to start to see that the bone graft material is going to stay in that particular aspect and help this heal in a very uh, fantastic way. So the 5.5 is going to prove to be a perfect design for molars for immediate placement. With the generous thread, uh, you're able to get the stability you need. With the conical connection, we get the bone to stay where we want to stay. And also we get a nice stable kind of abutment interface, making this so it's not going to rock. There's no micro gap on this particular implant because it's the micro gap. If there's any gap between the abutment, it's actually smaller than what the bacteria are. So that they can't fit in there because it's more of a kind of a friction fit, fit Morris type of taper. So it's kind of proving to be a very excellent choice in this particular molar area. And uh, we're able to see as we cinch this marble sac suture around here, it's just a chromic gut suture, but it pulls the tissue in around the particular peak abutment. And I like to take a little bit, a bit of PVS, polyvinyl siloxane and pressure material, put it in the access so I don't have to have a cotton pellet or anything like that in there and then this is ready to heal. So we're going to bring the patient back in a couple weeks 
and we'll take an x-ray and we'll have a look at this particular abutment and implant and see how it's healing. So look at this, this is the x-ray. You can see the bone is already starting to fill in and this is in the per you know, perfect place. The nerve is way down in this particular case. We can see the soft tissues are starting to heal and the implant is in a nice place for uh, future restorability. We want that implant screw to be right under the lingual cusp of the upper molar. And I think you'll agree that this is easier for the patient, predictable, we've got a properly sized implant for great emergence profile and so this is going to be a successful case. So placing the 5.5 by 13 has been a real great experience and this is Dr. Scott McLean and this has been a YouTube presentation about implant dentistry.